everyone, welcome to another week of School of Knock. Now we're starting to get into the tail end of our shot routine, and we're going to work on two specific things on this last and final step. Now just to go back through the first steps that we've worked on in these past weeks, we've first worked on looking down at our feet and making sure our stance is correct, then moving our eyes right to our grip, our hand position, we're raising that bow, we're checking the front shoulder position, we're drawing that release until the bow stops, we're coming to our anchor, then we're adjusting our head so that we're acquiring the peep sight. We worked last week, hopefully diligently, on peep acquisition, and you've learned what different peep positions can actually do for you, and how your alignment with your peep affects the impacts of your arrows. And based on what I've seen from a lot of you in your posts, you guys have done a great job in starting to identify your framing. Some people have went out and got a different size peep or changed the position of their sight so that they have that perfect halo or perfect eclipse like I've talked about. And then you've started to really focus on framing perfectly each and every shot. Now we're moving in to these last things that have to happen in order to execute a perfect shot. The key word here is execute because that is the term that I'm thinking of each and every time I'm working towards a perfect archery shot. At this point, our body position, our posture, our fit, everything should be in position and poised for a great shot. So at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to move our finger either to the trigger or if you're shooting a silverback, you're gonna be letting off the safety. Or if you're shooting a hinge release, you're gonna to start to relax that thumb pressure off the pulling post and start to go into that shot. Now, one of the things that I think about each and every time, and this is something that I went into great detail today on Knock On Podcast 213. So if you're watching this video, then I would urge you to go wherever you download your podcast and listen to podcast 213 because I talked for almost 30 or 40 minutes about the specifics of today's lesson. And that's pulling through the shot and finishing, okay? So what I like to imagine is as I draw back and I put my pin on that target, I like to allow the pin to float, and then once I've either acquired the trigger or let my finger off the safety, from that point on, I'm gonna commit to that shot and I'm gonna commit to continual motion pulling through that shot until that release fires. Now, one of the things that I think help a lot of archers in doing this the proper way is instead of thinking about pulling with your hand, you need to take your attention further away from that hand in order to activate more leverage that's gonna really help you get this shot to go off much, much easier. Now, I tell a lot of students, think of it like a crowbar, okay? If you have a crowbar and you're trying to pry something, or even if you have a tire jack underneath your car and you're jacking that car up, if you grab that jack very close to it and start to crank on it, it takes a lot of force and it takes a lot of focus to make that happen. Whereas if you extend to the outside or the end of that bar or that pole and you go ahead and crank that jack, you're hardly having to put as much pressure on that to get that same result. And that's a result of leverage. Same is true with the crowbar. If you're trying to pry something and you're grabbing it very close to the, pro the crowbar, it's really hard to pry it open. Whereas if you go all the way out to the end, you can push on it and it, it pops a lot easier. So we're going to think of that same thing in relation to our shot and our shot activation. Okay, because today we're really focusing on commitment, 
to the shot and the pulling motion. We're going to commit to that pulling motion. One thing I tell people is every time you start to interrupt that motion, you give an opportunity for things to start to change in your structure and in your shooting posture. So I tell people you have to learn to embrace the pin float. And I talk a lot about that on this podcast, podcast 213. I talk about the importance of understanding that as that pin is moving on the target, your subconscious is also, even though it's starting to move off the target, your subconscious is already recognizing that you're going off the target and it's already making those corrections that are going to bring it back to the target. So you have to embrace that float. Some people have a float a little bit left or right with their pin. Some people have a little bit more float up or down. Some people move around. And for me, different days give me different types of floats. But no matter what, I embrace that. And I still commit to the same motion pulling through that shot regardless of the float. And what you'll find is when you're doing that, you're doing what I refer to as being dynamic on the shot. And being dynamic and executing a pulling motion from behind the rear half of the body. Now, if you just want to be an aimer and you're stagnant and you make a stagnant shot or a static shot, then what you're going to find is with a lot of people, their groups, even if their pin is still and it's in the center, the groups start to open up. And that's because your pressure that you have on the back wall of that cam does have variation, even though you don't sense it. Now, another thing that a lot of people do is if you, if you don't commit to that shot and you move off the target a little bit and you stop your pull and then you get back and you get real still again and then you start and then once you move off, you stop your motion again and you try to get back and you start to pull again. As you're doing that, what a lot of people start to do is they start to collapse in this front shoulder. So as they're pulling, they're pulling and they stop, they reposition, and then as they start to pull again, and then they stop, and then they start to pull, I can just see this shoulder just collapsing, collapsing, collapsing. What happens is you're really never adding pressure on the entire system of the bow and pulling hard on the back wall of the cam. What you're doing is you're giving and you're taking. You're giving and you're taking, you're giving and you're taking, but you're never really getting the end result that you need. You have to focus on a continual dynamic pull. So with all that in mind, I want you to draw your attention back to the tip of this rear elbow when you're at full draw. And I want you to think of this rear elbow and pulling it towards something behind you. Now, if I was shooting directly at you, What I would do at full draw, you would notice that my elbow is sitting right over here at, to you, you know, you're going to see it right here. I'm going to think about pulling my elbow right back to the center of the thumb on this knock on. So the tip of my elbow is going to be pulling back like this. And as I'm building that pressure and that release fires with the surprise, I'm being dynamic and my motion is going to come through the shot instead of just nothing happens, nothing happens. The other thing, and one of the most critical things to this, is thinking about finishing the shot. So as I'm in this shot, and as I'm going through this routine, stance, grip, shoulder, anchor, peep, targets acquired, execute, execute, I'm thinking about that elbow, pulling to something in a position straight behind me at 12 o'clock, thinking about driving that elbow back as that shot fires. The last thing that I think about is finish. Always finish the shot. And what I mean by that is it's very important that this release hand follows a motion to where the release hand comes over the top of the shoulder. One mistake a lot of people make, and a lot of people that miss low or miss low and to the right, is they start to want to peak. And as that shot breaks, they just quit. Boom. And the release hand is already giving the arrow a predetermined direction, down and out. So we want this to come through. So as this executes and as I finish over the top, 
I'm sending the string in a perfect line. It's really, really important. And that's why people that aim and just sit there still and wait for the trigger and just try to hit the trigger when it's in the right spot, a lot of times you just don't get the result that you want. So in relation to the finish, the shot, as soon as that release breaks, I imagine flexing the rear bicep so that the release hand will contract and come over the top of the shoulder like this. It's really important. So this week, your assignment is dynamic execution. Execute and finish. One of the things that I think is important and that can help you is make sure you do this at closer distances. A lot of people are making progression quick during these School of Knock classes and I have already seen people that are extending their range out further to see how good they can do out far. I'm just here to tell you, I shoot at 20 yards for this entire, what I call the off season for hunting or in the winter season, I shoot at 20 yards. And I just really want to refine all these techniques and polish them, polish them, polish them. Just get them mirror perfect because that is what we need to have for when we go out into the field this next summertime or this next fall. We have to polish. You can polish at close distances and it's going to make you better at those longer distances. But don't try to take yourself too far too fast. So just to give you a quick look, I'm going to make a shot first with a silverback, just to show the, the dynamics of that. I'm going to go through these steps. Stance, grip, shoulder, anchor, peep. I'll get my peep acquisition. I will slowly let off the safety. And once my pin is in that target, I'm going to stare a hole through that target, and I'm going to allow my subconscious to do what it needs to do to let that pin be within the area and floating around. And I'm just gonna continue to focus on the tip of that elbow to something at 12 o'clock or even at 1230 behind me. And as that shot breaks, I'm gonna flex that bicep so that my release hand comes over the top of my shoulder. Now, depending on how much muscle mass you have or natural flexibility you have, your follow through some people, they're just not going to be able to come around as much. Some people can come around really, really well. You're going to have to see what's natural to you, but you have to start to focus on execute and finish. And again, that podcast gives you some great description and some great things to think about while that's happening. So here we go. First shot with a silverback. Stance, grip, Shoulder, anchor, peep, target acquired, let off the safety, execute, <coughs> dynamic, finish. Okay, if you're shooting a hinge release, the th it's going to be slightly different. So you might not be necessarily pulling as hard. You're going to probably be manipulating the release a little bit as you're also pulling, but the same thing has to happen. With a hinge release, people get in the habit of just aiming and holding pressure and manipulating the release, and then when it fires, nothing happens. You don't want that. Part of the reason why I train so much with the hinge release during this time is because I also wanna focus on being able to still have the dynamics and still be able to pull through that shot. So when my shots break really well and I come off really clean, the arrows just start to stack in the middle. And it's also a big reason why I spend days training with the silverback to just really focus on the dynamic, the dynamic, the dynamic. And then I'll switch over to a hinge, use that same dynamic, but then really have to even put more emphasis on the finish. So here we go, hinge release. We had my stance, grip, Shoulders good, anchor, peep, target acquired, dynamic. We're pulling, we're pulling, we're pulling, execution, we finish. Lastly, I'm gonna dig down in my little release pouch of tricks here. I'm gonna go to a knock to it. 
if you're shooting a trigger release, I can tell you right now, things are going to start to feel incredibly smooth with this. One of the things I want to stress with this release is you'll notice that all I do is bring my thumb to the back of that trigger. I'll put just a little bit of tissue on that trigger and from there my thumb never moves. I'm just focusing on the tip of that elbow. The thumb will be in the same position and as I pull that trigger naturally moves. So once that's cocked, I'll bring my finger there. As I pull, it'll fire without even having to move that thumb. You're gonna to start to realize just how quick, easy, and smooth this happens. So I'm looking down, stance, eyes to the grip, raise up, shoulders good, drawn back, anchoring, peep, target acquired, thumb to the trigger, now I'm thinking about tip of the elbow, execute, execute, <coughs> execute, finish my shot. That's all I want you to do. Go through all your steps. I want you to acquire the target, keep the target big, keep the target close, forget about the float. I want you to think about the tip of that elbow, continual motion, dynamic, until that breaks, finish your shot.